Okay. Yeah, it's windy. Mm. <laughs> okay, we are live. Green light. We got the green light. We got the green light. We're ready to go. Hey, hey everybody. My name is Bayzad. I'm Risa. And we're here from Wonder, Wonder Looper. Looper. This may look like a familiar live stream to some <laughs> others, but this is the Wonder Looper live stream. We're uh, broadcasting live from Yokohama, Japan, to give you all of the updates, uh, all the updates that are happening here yeah. at Wonder Looper. Uh, for those who might be watching for the first time, uh, Risa and I uh, are, are the creators of Wonder Looper. Uh -huh. um, we, you may know us from Naked and Famous Denim. We also work there. This is our, our own side project. And uh, we're here to, to bring you guys some of the most interesting and innovative and crazy knit fabrics you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Our passion for weird and really just pushing the limits of fabric is going to be crammed into this brand. And uh, I think we've done a pretty good job with what we've put out so far. Mm -hmm. Double heavyweight t-shirts. Mm -hmm. T-shirts that are coming in at 409 GSM. Which is 12 ounce, about. Yeah. Uh, so like a typical denim fabric. So just a, a ultra beefy t-shirts. Uh, very, very substantial. These have been incredibly popular. We have the 701 GSM double heavyweight French Terry. Again, we use the term double heavyweight because in so much of the knitwear world, a heavyweight fabric is about half of the weight of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, for the t-shirt, yeah. like we see a lot of heavyweight t-shirts on the market that are six ounce. Yeah, or two hundred GSM. Yeah, and when we should also just for for the, those who are new, we should talk about the difference uh, when we talk about ounces and GSMs, mm -hmm. uh, what we really mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is like one of our <laughs> missions, yes. I guess, is that uh, a lot of the times the aunts that you you hear uh, in regard in reference to knit fabric is not aunts per square yard. It's often aunts per linear yard, right. which means that a lot of the times it's the, the one meter length but it will be the width of the fabric that is made. And the width of the fabric depends on the fabric. So you can't really understand what the... Actual weight of the fabric is. Right. If the width of the fabric is different every time. Right. So it's not a con constant unit that you can refer to. GSM, on the other hand, is it's in the name. So it if you, if you say 12 ounce you're not saying anything at all right. after that so you're just kind of guessing you it might be per linear yard but when you say gsm gsm stands for grams per square meter so that that's that a fixed unit right exactly right. so it's always at yeah. grams per square yeah. meter which is something that we can trust and we tr we try to get the correct information on that and yes. you're going to talk about how you sometimes cannot Sometimes trust you it. can't trust it because oftentimes you will see a GSM listed and there's some reverse backwards math that's going on. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you'll see a fabric that is listed as, you know, maybe 20 ounce material. Mm -hmm. but 20 ounces per what? We don't know. Mm -hmm. 20 ounces. So when when even when we go to the fabric mills, sometimes they'll give us a linear yard measurement. And sometimes they'll give us a uh, a square yard or a square meter measurement. And we always make sure that we're getting the square meter or the square yard measurement. But some people might take that linear yard ounce weight and then do an automatic conversion to GSM. And then you boost up that number like crazy. And it ends up not being a true figure at all. Um, I've seen other people uh, take GSM measurements from like a double like a like a like a two ply fabric mm -hmm. not a double weave fabric but a two ply fabric so it's just two fabrics that are so layered or layered on top of each other yeah and they'll take the gsm of that and that's actually also not technically correct mm -hmm. it should be from a single layer fabric unless it is actually double woven so two fabrics woven together while being made mm -hmm. so or knit together or knit together um so there's a lot of you know gray area out there in the world. We're trying to make sure that all the information that we put out is as correct as possible. And of course, we try to teach you guys uh, how to spot and notice these things because there are certainly a lot of GSM claims out there that don't weigh up. Is that a, is that a term? 
I don't live. No I don't know. Anyways, you guys know what I mean. Uh, I just make up analogies. Was that even an analogy? That was an explanation of the frustration we feel about this weight, fabric weight business yeah. in knitwear. Uh, it, it, it's funny because we come from denim world and right. denim always is on per square yard. There is no confusion about it, but like in the knit world, there's a uh, insane amount of confusion yeah. and I, we, ju we just want to put it out there because a lot of you cannot hold the uh, actual item in hands once you do then you can understand what we're saying when we say double heavy weight yeah. or you know 700 gsm or 21 ounce or right. something like that but you, like when you're just shopping online maybe you can't tell the difference between like the correct information and not we just want to Educate everybody so you're confident in what you're purchasing. Right. Uh, so that that's uh, the first little bit. But anyhow, yeah. um, we've got a lot of great updates for you today. Yeah. Um, so it's been two months. It's been two months. I think. We've been yeah. working a lot on the fall winter twenty three collection. Um, we did talk about it in the last stream. Some of the new things that are happening. We're going to talk about those today, including uh, fit updates. So we've got a, a, some slight fit modifications to mm -hmm. uh, the hoodies that we've got. We've got some new colors. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some uh, updated construction details. Mm -hmm. We've got some uh, a new um, trim details. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a new T-shirt to unveil. Mm -hmm. Am I forgetting anything? New colors. Because sweatpants anyways and, and our our maybe we can talk a little bit ab about our recent trip right to the yes to uh to the wakayama region of japan where we got to watch not only our yarn being spun mm -hmm. but we also got to witness our fabrics being made mm -hmm. so uh we've developed some some even stronger relationships with our partners and uh we've got some hopefully i'm gonna i'm gonna say i'm gonna knock on some wood some some very very exciting products that will happen down the line. So there's some we're we're getting into the the starting phases of you know new developments. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we're not, I'm not going to reveal those just yet because that's <laughs> it's way too early for that. But uh, th there will be some great stuff. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know I think I'll just we'll start with this, then we'll show off some new stuff. But I think because of our success and the success that you know the support that you've given us, the mills are taking us. A lot more seriously now mm -hmm. you know when we first started i think some of the folks that we worked with thought you know because many new brands mm -hmm. they show up they they do a production or sometimes they don't even get to the, the point of production they make samples yeah so there, there's a there's a big failure rate in this and mm -hmm. you know we we are veterans of this industry of course but you know they don't know us from adam you know what i mean mm -hmm. we're, we're new to them some of these some of the people that we're working with and so I guess when they saw what we did, how fast we did it, the success that we've had, now they're realizing that, okay, mm -hmm. we can... And we the can, fact that we pay the bills. Yeah, and <laughs> the fact that we pay the bills, important. that's true. Um, so yeah. they're confident in us. We got to meet with the president, the owner of the mill, uh, and he was very you know, supportive of us mm -hmm. and uh, excited to work on some new projects. So. Uh, uh, we'll start off thanking you guys here for all of your incredible support of Wonderlooper. You know, it's we're a small brand. Mm -hmm. We're a very small brand. Just the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> and, you but, know, we pick, pack, and ship everything. You know, yeah. we, we shoot, we do everything ourselves. And, you know, we just try to put out the best product possible. And, you know, the word has spread around yeah. the Internet quite, quite nicely. Yeah. And because of you, we are p capable, again, of making more new yes. stuff, more exciting stuff. Yeah. So it is, I think it is a very... It's a, it's a beautiful cycle we've got yeah, going on here. beautiful start of, yeah. our, of something yeah. more okay. interesting. So let's start off with... Yeah, the new fit. New yeah, let's, uh, let's do a zip hoodie. Zip hoodie. So oh. zip hoodie. Oh, Wait. yeah, yeah. Yes. We'll start off with the zip hoodie. Why not? Anyhow, we'll, we'll, it won't be... I don't know. We, I think we had a game plan when we started this, but... Huh, I'm, didn't, yeah. didn't write those yeah. scripts. Yeah. So we have the new zip hoodie for those people who've been waiting. We had the pullover hoodie, which Risa is wearing right now. Mm -hmm. And now we're adding the new zip. And we had the crew neck. Now we're adding the new zip hoodie. This is the same fit as the pullover. Zip hoodie was one of the most requested item. And obviously we were going to make it, but we were just... It was just uh, a matter of time. Yeah. So we've got the split pocket in the front. 
And for production, it will be a double zip, so you can go up and down. This is not the final zipper. We are working with a, uh, a, a, a company here in Japan called Waldies, and they do uh, vintage reproduction zippers. So yeah. very, very rare high-end zippers. Um, you find these often on vintage. Number one, they, this was a, a, a company that did make uh, trims for military garments mm -hmm. and leather jackets. They still so exist. It's an America brand. Right. So there's okay. a Japanese company that still produces them yeah. today. And uh, we're making some, uh, some of our, we're, all of our zipper hardware is coming from them. So double zip, split pocket on the front. Same fit that you can expect as the pullover hoodie, but now with the, uh, the zip on the front. So you have that, that uh, rib side panel. Now, as far as changes to the hoodie are, is concerned, there are a few things uh, we talked about last time because our factory was having an issue with the... Uh, What's available? Yes, in, in the Fox Fiber. Police box. So as far as the, uh, the detail changes, the hood. For the double heavyweight French Terries, the hood will be a single ply hood. So if you have, if you bought a hoodie from us already, you have that double thick hood. Unfortunately, that was a very, very difficult thing to sew. And as much as we loved it, the factory absolutely had a problem with it. Yeah. And uh, it slowed down production. And so we decided that in, in the last stream, we talked with you guys, we consulted with you. We're, we went with the single ply hood. It does make the hood a little bit bigger now. Hmm. And the other thing is that it dries easier. Mm -hmm. So if you, if, you, if you had a problem drying your double thick hood, which you, you might have had an issue because it was so thick, yeah. uh, it is a lot uh, more, anyway, it's bigger. It's not as thick, but it is yeah. dr drier. It dries yeah. better. Um, so and that wasn't really like an option to continue. So, but but we talked to you guys, yeah. the community, and yeah. I think everybody liked the idea of having the loops visible, um, and you know keep the single layer. So yeah. I think that that like we were all on the same page, and then I'm I'm happy how it came out because it's still not like a floppy yeah. hood. It it's, still has a decent amount of structure to bit, it because yeah. it is so thick. And then fleece fox fiber would stay the double yeah. uh, construction. So there would still be a Two double. Two piece. Well, yeah. yeah, you can see it here. Yeah. Two piece. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, somebody, BD, noticed it. The drawstring cords mm -hmm. are new, thicker, a little bit droopier, seven millimeter thick drawstring cords, and they are actually customized. It might be hard to see here, but I'm gonna pull it up on the screen and you guys can get a little bit of a preview. Biggity bam. So these are gonna be the new metal aglets that you will find on our double. In fact, on all the hooded garments, so not just the double heavyweight, but also the fleece fox fiber, and this natural kind of ecru colored cotton with the metal embossed WL Wonder Looper logo here on the inside. We're very, very happy to have this, and uh, we hope that you guys, that you guys like it. So that's... Uh, I love it. I, I think I they're fantastic. It, yeah. uh, so that's, that's another new detail that's headed your way. Um, as far as fit changes mm -hmm. are concerned for the hoodies, um, there's just one little mm -hmm. detail uh, change is that the body at the bottom tapers in a little bit mm -hmm. more. Before it was a much more straight, now it tapers in just ever so slightly. So it, it's not tight on the body, but it is a little bit more closer to the body than before. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that on the, on the zip hoodie. You will also find it on the double heavyweight uh, uh, pullover hoodies. So those are those all, are all all of the body. So oh like right right sorry. Police, all not not regardless of the fabric. Yeah. The pullover hoodie, uh, crew, crew neck. neck they both uh, adjusted in the waistband, and yeah. then um, I guess the zip hoodie. Zip hoodie and pullover hoodie is the same fit. Yeah. It's just uh, you know the opening. Yeah. And if you haven't noticed just yet. This is a new color. Mm -hmm. So this is the new Ecru color. We've got three new colors coming out mm -hmm. in the double heavyweight French Terry. We've got the Ecru. 
we've got the collegiate red. So yeah. this is kind of based off of like Ivy League, uh, yeah. you know, style colors. This and looks pretty proper. Yeah, I think I think yeah. it came out. The, yeah, so the it's camera's not a bright, really showing it off. Right, red. red. It's like a little muted. So. Yeah, a little bit more burgundy-ish. Ron, Ron Burgundy, some might say. And then uh, that's a great segue yeah. into uh, sweatpants. Yeah. So we've got the collegiate green. Yeah. Also here in the sweatpants. So the sweatpants. We talked about it last time that I wasn't sure if we could do the double heavyweight in the sweatpants because I was worried about them being too heavy. Too heavy. <laughs> They're fine. Actually, I've, I've worn them. I've tested them. They're great. They are These so nice. Are the most comfortable. Yeah. Like sturdy feeling yeah. sweatpants I've ever put my legs in. Yeah, if you're traveling, this would be a great traveling sweatpants. Like I, I do see more and more people wearing sweatpants on flights. Yeah. This will be my flight sweatpants. Oh, hundred percent. For if it's comfortable, yeah. but it it is not like a pajama type yeah. sweatpants. No, it feels like this is equivalent to like a twenty ounce pair of jeans. Yes, and also. Because we have like not a jogger style leg opening, yeah. that our leg opening just is a straight leg, um, so you can you know you can wear it more a little bit more like a pants. Yeah, um, you can roll it up. You can even hem it if you need to. Uh, hemming is you know I, I think it can be done easily at yeah. your local tailor. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't like kind of it doesn't. Yeah, if you Messed get up. yeah, if you yeah. get an elastic bottom pant, yeah, because of the length, sometimes you might it might just stack up like crazy. Mm -hmm. We didn't want that to happen, so you have a lot of options here. You can you can roll it, you can hem it, you can do a lot here. So detail wise, you have the slash pockets on the front. You got that super thick drawstring cord here. Also elastic waistband, so you've got both. You got the single pocket here on the back. You've got the rib side paneling here on the side, just to, same thing as your, your sweatshirt, so it'll match it perfectly. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it comes in, it'll come in all of the colors yeah. of so the double heavyweight the previous Bunchary. existing yeah. colors, like heather gray, sumi black, um, khaki, green, khaki green, and navy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you've got so many different color options here in the sweatpants, so many color options here in the double heavyweight French terries. Uh, very very exciting times yeah uh, so we talked about two new fits yes and the uh sweatpants yeah we did not talk about the crew neck change so right let's get into that okay okay so crew neck Ooh. um crew neck uh again the the bottom hem uh, of the crew neck is slightly tapered in mm -hmm. again. Uh, the biggest change to the crew neck is in the neckline though. Right. So the neckline, we changed it to a binder collar. So yeah. it's the same collar that we use for uh, our heavyweight, double heavyweight t-shirts. It is a type of collar that um, The fabric basically, basically goes in. Yeah, it's like a, you know, cover the... <laughs> Cover this. The yeah, fabric. so it just yeah. it gives you more depth. It gives you more three D look. Yeah. And then on top of that, we made the V a little larger. Yeah, we made the before. V a little larger, and now it's on the outside. So yeah. It, so it is still an inlaid style. Um, we're not just patching it on to the body of the the uh, the the sweater. We're still inlaying, but yeah. it's on now on the on the front side so that it is again adding a little bit more depth yeah so it, uh, it before we had a sleeker look to yeah. the collar and then uh, it's kind of built inside so it, it kind of dipped a little bit but now it's like kind of um yeah it, it gives you a a little bit more of um yeah like um how do you call it what do you call it 3d okay. yeah texture it's, sure so this is season one with the with the crew neck, very sleek and very uh, you know clean and modern looking. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. It looks pretty dark. Yeah. And then season two and on, it will be a little bit more three D and textured. Yeah. So I mean you know different strokes for different folks, but uh, those are the fit changes that are happening here in crew neck land and uh, and and yeah and so yeah. on. Um, okay, now let's let's hit let's hit the chat. And uh, here, let me just hand that to you one second, and we'll answer a couple of questions. Um, 
a lot of a lot of thumbs up, a lot of love. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm glad that you're liking everything so far. The Rex review need the sweatpants. Oh, they'll be they'll be coming out soon. Uh, and speaking of soon, I'm sure there's a couple of questions here talking about when this is coming out. So schedule wise, we're hoping to have these out in retailer hands by September. In September. In September. Yeah. So um, uh, it might be late September. I can't. Yeah. We'll, we'll try our best. We're, yeah. we'll, we'll keep you even more posted with that. But September is the target date for delivery. Uh, so keep an eye on that and obviously keep an eye out for our um, our updates with that. Um, also, I just want to mention about the Accru. We added the Accru, number one, because we like Accru. Mm -hmm. But number two, this will also give us dying options. Right? Maybe. Maybe. What? It's not. It's... Okay, you don't want to go there yet? No, okay, not really. anyway. It... We, we, we have no confirmation. Yeah, we have no confirmation, but it, it was... Part of, part of the plan. Anyway, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that hill when we get to that hill. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Parker at Madison, loving the green as well. If my budget allows, I would like to pick up a zip hoodie in that colorway. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's, it, I think we, like, versatility wise, color wise, we've got a lot covered. Um, if there is something you guys want to see us make, let us know. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're all ears uh, when it comes to that. Um, Three dog howl indigo dyed sweatpants. Mm -hmm. Indigo dyed um, things will have to come. Yes, we know that. It's just uh, it's just a matter of time. It is another beast. Yeah. So we're trying to tackle little by little, yeah. one by one. Also, if there's a question I didn't answer and you want it answered, and if I missed it, just ask it again. I have no problem if you go if, for you to spam the questions. Um, uh, Jules Jenkins, uh, are there challenges dyeing a fabric that is so thick, or are the threads dyed before knitting? So, um, the, the, for the double heavyweight uh, French terry that we use, everything except for the heather gray is dyed after it's knit. Yeah. So and it is it is one of those things where like the weight is heavier than it costs more to die. It is difficult to die. So um, I might be just skipping a little bit here, but when we uh, talked about something that is even heavier weight, mm -hmm. like as a possibility in the future, the the concern, the, uh, one of the larger concerns was that it might be difficult to dye as yeah. a fabric. And dyeing as yarn is obviously possible, but it is, you know, the, the lot is a lot larger, first of all. Um, so it might be difficult for us at, at current state. Um, and on top of that, it would be... Um, <laughs> it will be yeah and i mean i, I just don't want to get too detailed yeah. but yeah it, it's 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 best if a good dye as fabrics yeah. and then there is a difficulty with dyeing heavier weight yeah. fabrics so. it's, it is not as easy as dyeing lighter weight fabrics you need a heck of a lot more dye also because it just these things have to absorb a lot of color yeah dyeing process yeah. usually they charge per uh weight yeah okay um uh uh, Jong Jin Park writes, will you guys ever consider a half zip sweatshirt like the ones that zip up from neck high? Mm -hmm. I, I personally like those, but yeah. it might be one of those things that like when we have everything basic covered, we might venture out yeah. to that. Not at this time. Yeah. We're, we're not opposed to anything, really. It's yeah. Just, it's just no, I do like time. half zip ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, BD, do you have any natural dyes you'd like to use and would like to use traditional places for that? And would you use traditional places for that? Uh, do you have any natural dyes you'd like to use? I mean, all of the natural dyes, natural indigo. Yeah, I've been researching some like natural dye uh, places that we maybe we can work with mm -hmm. in the future. Um, there's there's a, a few great ones here. Um, I think it's it's a difficulty because um, a lot of the times these are all like it, it's not there's no like mass company doing yeah. a lot of natural dye that are just you know ready. Uh, we would have to um, 
work with a small company, which we love, but yeah. then, you know, it, it's going to be difficulty with yeah. um, figuring that and out. And with the quantities well. that we might have for them. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we will, it is all on the, the agenda. Mm-hmm. It, it'll come soon. Uh, might not be sooner than later, but might be later than sooner. Something like that. Okay, khaki shibu, absolutely natural indigo. Uh, mm-hmm. th- all all of your favorite natural dyes. We will mm-hmm. we will we will dive into at some point. Yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about double heavyweight French terry. Let's talk about fleeced fox fiber mm-hmm. because we do have the fleeced fox fiber also available here in the zip hoodie. Um, so everything we just talked about in terms of fit and the um, yeah, the double heavyweight fabrics is also going to apply to um, to this fleece fox fiber series, except for the the hood yeah. being single layer. Right. Okay. Um, we are introducing a new colorways to the fleece fox fleece fiber fox land fiber, um, fabrics. So this is the charcoal. Yeah. Just to compare to the heather gray we had. Yeah, so we got the light heather gray. Heather gray. We've got the charcoal gray, which is, you know, it's a heather dark kind of black gray mix. Yeah. And, and then, then we, we have, have the, the oatmeal, oatmeal the yeah. original color. So we have a new addition here in Fleece Fox Fiberland, mm-hmm. just as beautiful and soft and cozy on the inside. Now with the darker color on the outside, available in uh, the three tops fits. So the, the, the crew neck the pullover hoodie and the zip hoodie in addition to the sweatpants. And yeah. of course, you, this doesn't have the right drawstring, but uh, anyways, it was just a sample we were working our way through, but uh, it is still just as thick. And uh, yeah, you've got that, yeah, that super comfort head. fabric. Yeah. Ooh. And and we will have from sizes extra small to double XL. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, we've got you covered. If you're if you're your wife or your girlfriend or somebody smaller, your significant other, whomever, wants a, 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 a smaller pair because yeah. they're gonna want one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the coziness factor of this fabric is ridiculously high. Yes. You will, uh, your whole, very, very it's fun cozy. for the whole family. Yeah. That's for sure. If you, like, I mean, another thing about the, the fleece fox fiber is that, like, um, you know, like, it, it's, it's, Getting a little warmer here, yeah. But I still feel comfortable yeah. with this. Uh, double heavyweight, I might put it in the closet for. A I've long been wearing mine. It's it's it's, it's it yeah. still gets chilly, but yeah. yeah, in the in the warmer months. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's what the zip's it's, for. It's, Open it up on a summer, <laughs> summer day. Yeah. Um, okay, good question. Um, Jordan Jenkins asks, can you go more into detail about the fleeced foxed fiber? Where does it get its name, and why is it so soft? Yeah, so the fabric, let's just uh, talk about this. So this is a terry fabric, French terry fabric. Uh, the, the front side, the, the out, outer, outer layer, mm-hmm. is made with um, recycled, recycled cotton. cotton yarns. And these are beautiful, like... Um, uh, and, yeah, so the recycled cotton that is used to make the exterior here comes from basically the waste processes of the yarn spinning. Right. So when you're actually, we can uh, yeah, we can see we some can papers. show you a clip here of some yarn spinning action because I have it loaded up somewhere. One second, uh, it might. I don't think we'll show the. Uh, okay, anyways, this is some yarn spinning action. Well, we can start over here. You can see actually this is what's creating the natural slub of our yarns. But what happens during the yarn spinning processes and all of the processes that go before we get to yarn spinning, uh, you get cotton fluffs that just fly up into the air. And as we walked through that mill, you can just see cotton flying everywhere. It, it kind of accumulates on, the, on and around the machines on the floor. And there are like these little vacuum machine robots that go around the factory picking up that cotton. And that cotton is so light, it's so airy, it's so fluffy that it makes a very, very, basically when they take it, they reuse it, and it makes a very, very soft and comfortable cotton. And that's what we use on the exterior 
yeah. of this. And you would expect that because the lightest part of the con is this, is the con that is going to go flying off into space. So and, and the beauty of that is because it is a mix of different cotton. So that includes longer staple cotton, shorter staple cotton, and all kinds of different cotton. So it does give this like you know natural unevenness. Yeah. Uh, it, it just gives you. It kind you of pills the, up a little bit. Yeah, and gives you that like vintage, retro yeah. uh, sweatshirt feel. Yeah. So that's the the uh, front side, and on the back side, the interior. Mm -hmm is made with fox fiber. Fox fiber, yeah. we talk about it a lot, yeah. but so, it, it's one so, of our favorite fibers. So fox <laughs> fiber cotton comes from America. It's exclusively grown in America. Uh, yeah. It was developed by a, a, a farmer. Her name is Sally Fox, and gets the, the cotton gets the name mm -hmm. from her. And she has over decades uh, uh, bred cotton to have this natural occurring color. So the color of fox fiber doesn't come through dyes or anything like that. It is grown this way. So there are actually a couple of different shades of fox fiber. There, uh, there are several, uh, from, from brownish to greenish hues. But it is a cotton color that it ages with time. As you wear it, as you wash it, it actually becomes darker and lighter. It, it, it's quite beautiful, this process. So it's a living color. And because there's no chemicals, it's organically grown. It's grown in the USA. It's a long staple cotton it makes a very, very beautiful cotton fiber that we use on the inside. And this is a French terry fabric, as Risa said, but you know, why, why doesn't it have the loops? That's because we brush the fabric. So it's basically like a giant rake that scratches the fabric and this lifts the fibers up to make this kind of pillowy soft material on the inside. And that's why these sweatshirts are so darn soft. Yes. And we, that's why we call this fleeced fox fiber. fiber. That's yeah. it. So, uh, yeah, we we love them. I hope you guys love them. These are, you know, they they they're they're pretty sold out. I don't think. Yes. Do we have even one left on the website? I think we might have like extra small crew neck. Yeah, they're of the colors. They are. They <laughs> flew. Yes. Um, this was. This was not intentional. We didn't aim to like sell out yeah. so quickly. And I, I do feel a um, little bad that yeah. people who wanted it couldn't get it. But um, we are taking that into consideration for the next round. Yeah. So hopefully we have enough stock to get to, you know, yeah. everybody. And in, in fact, for this season, our, our inventory intention was to carry us through until the fall. Um, but your support was so strong that you basically sold us out by mid end February. Like we have some inventory left on the website, but it's very scarce. Yes. Um, so thank you very much for all that. Thank but you. we didn't we didn't try to do this. It was no, uh, not at all. We were taken a little by surprise here. So uh, next season we do plan on carrying more to compensate for that. Um, also, t-shirts, the double heavyweight t-shirts are going to be restocked in June. So um, if you've been waiting for one, we don't have your size, we didn't have your color, June, we will have the new uh, batch of double heavyweight t-shirts yeah. available no on the No new colors website. at this point, yeah. uh, but everything in every size is going to be restocked. Yeah. Uh, uh, Zhang Jin Park, are there any new colorways for the foxed fleece? Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the charcoal one. Uh, yeah. So we will have the original gr uh, Heather Gray. We have the oatmeal, which Risa is wearing right now. So we've got uh, Heather Gray, oatmeal, and then we have the new charcoal color. So uh, soon we'll have the website. I wouldn't say that soon, but uh, before the products come out, the website will have um, will have new photos. Uh, and we'll start to tease some of the photos on the Instagram uh, soon. So uh, you'll, you'll start to see this. We wanted to wait to announce all this stuff before we started showing stuff off on the Instagram. So you guys are the first to hear about it, the first to see it, the first to know about it. Um, okay. Um, uh, uh, Dalo uh, writes, would you be willing to tell us your heights and weights and what size you wear? Yeah, I'm five foot eight, 165, around 165 pounds. I wear a size medium. I wear a size medium consistently through the line. So there's no, you know, this is a medium for me in the uh, in the zip hoodie. Fits me great. I any bigger, I think it might be too big. Any smaller, I could probably I could probably size down, but I, I like to have my sweatshirts a little bit on the yeah. You know, 
I like to have a little bit of room in there. Yeah. So, and the one thing to note is that his arms are pretty long yeah. for his height. So I, I've got monkey arms yeah. for my height, and I'm pretty covered here. I don't mm -hmm. really have any issues with the with the length. Yeah. Um, I am um, five foot four. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And then 120 pounds ish. It's okay. Who knows? Yeah. Um, that's but cool. yeah, I'm wearing a size extra small in all of those things because that's. The smallest size yeah. we make, but uh, yeah, it's uh, and your jean size Nick is Drake. like a 27, 28, 27. Yeah. I wear 27 in Naked and Famous, but um, yeah, with the t shirt, I wear it extra small mm -hmm. too. But I, I have put on like a medium and it looks great too, yeah. So it's just a matter of how you um, how you want to style things, yeah. Yeah, one of our one of our customers, um really likes to a lady customer likes to really oversize yeah, she's everything smaller than me yeah. but she she chose like size medium yeah yeah so and uh so, yeah it's just i think with um with tops mm -hmm. with with sweats yeah cotton so it's it the, you have a lot more room to play in terms of like how you want to it's easy to oversize it and uh you know wear it the way you want yeah so you, you have a little bit of options there. Yeah. I saw there's a, a couple of comments about making an oversized tee, uh, Daryl Hands. It's possible that we do a different silhouette in the future, but I think for now, even if you just sized up one or two, I think you'd be happy with the results there. Yeah. And uh, if, even if you find the t-shirts too long, I mean, those are things that you could actually take to the tailor shop to, yes. to uh, shorten if you need to. Yeah. Um, okay, Christina, oh, sorry, Christian B., any plans for a relaxed fit or boxy fit t-shirt? XL is always too long, but L is always too narrow for me. Right. Yeah, if it's yeah. if it's just a matter of length, it is actually a, a pretty normal, uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, alteration. alteration that your tailor shop can do. Yeah, your, we cannot do that. Yeah, uh, we got some questions on that. We can t do that, but you take it to any local tailor. I think they can uh, do that for you. Yeah, no problem. When I worked at uh, a shop where we had tailoring services, we we did that for people all the time. Very very normal alteration. Um, okay, uh, Jong. Uh, okay, uh, because of the fox fleece inside, it's difficult to make fox fleece sweats in other bolder colors like burgundy no, no it's just a matter of right now we're doing this recycled cotton uh fox fiber combo we're not yeah. um uh, we're, we're just we're just working with this yeah. this base yeah. but if we create a new base it's it's not impossible to do that we yeah. just uh haven't had the time to develop a new brand new fabric using fox fiber just yet yeah just a just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, BD, I really like the silky care tags in the G1 shirts. Will you keep those the same? They're so soft and I never notice it's there. Okay. Yes, we would have the same tag. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the labels are the same. So the Wonder Looper. Um, I think care label. Oh, sorry, the care label. Yeah. Yes, those are going to stay the same. But uh, just speaking of labels, mm -hmm. because we can get to the next thing. Um, the Wonder Looper, these are all shuttle loomed, by the way. Mm -hmm. You can see they're not shuttle printed. In Japan. They're all shuttle loomed here in Japan, just the, the same way that uh, d denim is shuttle loomed. Yeah, we, and what, what we liked about this original label yeah. is that like we were able to create this like chain stitched look by, you know, using the chain, chain stitched shape, yeah. but also raising a little bit so that it looks like it's chain stitched. It yeah. has a little uh, height to yeah. it. Um, so take a close look at your label because yeah. there, a lot of care really goes into this and there is a 3D-ness to it right. uh, and it definitely won't show up on camera here but maybe it does um, but you can see that uh, and Risa also designed the font and everything for this as well so um, yeah very talented young lady here young lady yeah that's debatable no nope. um, but in in regards to the label yeah. uh, you saw topic. a teaser of this at least on the uh, yeah on the Instagram yeah so, so let's just move on to the new product first. okay okay the sure new product um, that we're releasing that we're very very excited about is a new T-shirt so this is um, ultimate Pima hundred percent ultimate Pima Tsuriyami loop wheel 
t-shirt. Yeah. It is. This L- is. Let's take a look at it. So there you have it there. You can see it's, we'll, we'll get into the, we'll get yeah, into the label. labels. But. Okay. This is perhaps the most luxurious t-shirt ever produced. Mm-hmm. Ever. And we're using a cotton that is so rare, it is exclusively made for our yarn spinner in Japan here. It's an American extra long staple organic cotton. It is the longest cotton fiber grown either natural, uh, sorry, organically or conventionally, even with pesticides. This comes out to be the long, technically it's debatable, but even if, with that said, it is among the longest staple. I've, I've heard debates about it, but one person tells me one thing, another person tells me another. Regardless, it is, there's no debate that it is one of the longest cotton fibers ever yes. produced, ever. And it's grown in America. It's called Ultimate Pima Cotton. So we've heard of Pima Cotton. Pima Cotton is a premium cotton, usually of a long staple variety. Supima cotton is American grown long staple cotton. So among Supima cotton, among the Pima cottons, only 1% of it is organically grown. So of all the Pima cotton that is grown, 1% of it is organic. And of that 1% of organic, the longest 1% of fibers goes into ultimate Pima. Mm -hmm. So it's the 1% of the 1% organically grown long staple cotton fiber makes a very, very luxurious yarn. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were talking to the spinner and they were talking to us about like the stats of cotton production. And uh, sorry, I'm not going to remember these offhand. So in the, the season that is uh, 2020 and 2021, uh, that was the latest year that, this yes. data was available. Uh, the world cotton production, all of the world producing cotton, uh, all of the all the of the cotton, cotton production in the world in the world <laughs> produced twenty four million uh, tons of cotton. Yeah. Twenty four million tons of cotton, and of that, three hundred and forty two thousand tons of cotton are organic cotton. Yeah. So that's already like so much less than than Does it give us a percentage? No, it not does quite. not. We, but we yeah, so maybe of the 24 a, million tons, yeah, 340 342,000 tons of that. Yeah. So it's, less easily, I don't know what the percentage is, but a fraction of a percent mm-hmm. is organic. Right. And of All that, that 11 tons is ultimate Pima cotton. Yeah. So only 11 tons is ultimate Pima. Yeah. Only 11 tons of yeah. cotton in the world is made, made is ultimate Pima. And ultimate Pima, you know, among there, there are other like very high quality yes. cottons there too. So I'm not saying that 11 tons is the only highest grade cotton, but it is a very rare cotton. And then it's it's what we like about it is that we know who made who grew this cotton yes. too. Like we don't know him personally yet, but we yeah. know th- this only one farm yes. that does it, and it, it it's a contract farm, which yeah. is also very very important because right. when we talked about organic cotton production, it is it must be a labor of love because organic cotton production is so much harder than conventional cotton production. The yields are smaller. The cotton puffs are smaller. The amount of work on the land is incredibly more difficult. And one of the like more interesting data that I found was that the days to um, grow cotton, like from seed to like harvest uh, for regular cotton, it's 160 to 180 days. But with um, organic ELS fiber, like uh, Ultimate Pima, it takes 260 to 270 days. So it's a lot, lot longer mm-hmm. days to do it, too. So it, it's, it's in every single way, it is less efficient yes. way to make cotton. Right. And they talked about the farmer who grows this for us, and he's like, this is, 
he has a passion for natural farming. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to have a kind of person like this in order to make a, a cotton like this. Mm -hmm. Because the yields are small. You could be making so much more money doing it the other way. He's not interested in that. And so the, the, our yarn spinner and the, and the farmer, they're in an agreement where whatever you produce, we, here's what we want to order per year. You, if you grow that much, we buy everything. If you grow more, we'll buy everything. If you grow less, we'll pay you as much as we told you we were going to pay you for the yield. Because we don't want you to be so stressed out on having to, you know, produce, produce, produce. Produce and what you can. If Mother Nature produces more for you, we've got more sunny days. We've got the amount of, you know, precipitation that we need to grow more. Then yeah. it happens and it happens. But we want you to focus on just producing the best cotton. Yeah. And agriculture, apparently it is a, a problem when you over make it too, because yes. you have to waste it because you, you you cannot sell all of them. But we don't have that problem. Um, and, you know, for for such a, like a little um, personal touch, this farmer, I, I saw an interview uh, with him that he, he started growing this cotton, he decided to turn into this uh, type of organic cotton because he had a son. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you have a baby and you want to use, you know, the best materials around him, the, the ultimately, like, he decided this is this is the right way to grow cotton and we want to have this safe, you know, very naturally grown um, uh, fiber available for people to use for their babies or whatever. And... So, so that's how he started, and now, like, his son is, like, a 30-year-old, yeah. like, a grown adult, and apparently he's working with yeah. him next at the farm, so he's going to continue this yeah. farm and, um, and to the next generation. Actually, this is one of the parts I really love about what we do, we're doing right now, is that mm -hmm. we're going so deep down the rabbit hole, and, you know, we're starting to really dive deep into the agricultural part of like apparel production yeah and the importance of it and you know so like even in the, in the food world you know you go to a fancy restaurant and they'll tell you what farm that came from you yeah. know it's farm to table this type of thing and we definitely don't talk about that enough not even a little bit it, it, in it is the apparel world it is a yeah. lot more difficult yeah. to um to trace uh everything uh we 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 have you know, I have spoken to like people in this industry uh, that that are trying to do this kind of things, but it is very difficult once it comes to through like because apparel industry it goes through a lot of different hands. Restaurant, you get the ingredients and you cook it and you serve it to the people, so it's a lot easier to to see trace it back to the origin. Whereas in the apparel industry, there's so much more process, so many different. Um, there's there's different companies involved in every step of the uh, turning cotton raw material into a, a pearl uh, from finished garment. Yeah. So it is a lot difficult, but we we are trying to push this like transparency. We want to know, like we want to be able to tell, like not only where the cotton came from, but like how it was grown and yeah. you know who grew it and all of that thing so yeah. i think with this ultimate pima we can like trace it back to a single origin which is a lot de yeah. easier yeah. actually because they, they yeah. are the only people who yeah. are making yeah. ultimate pima yeah and even beyond that actually it's kind of interesting because you can you can trace it back to the single origin but also like the seed variety mm -hmm. because a lot of the cotton a lot of the premium cotton in the world comes from one a variety of cotton seed but because they're grown in different parts of the world they develop and evolve differently mm -hmm. so like sea island cotton for example is a premium cotton that has been developed in so many different places in the world that yeah. the variety it might have the root in sea island cotton but where it's grown and how it's grown now it has developed yeah. differently yeah. like we 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 so, were shown like different examples of like we were shown extinct varieties of cotton yeah. which was kind of neat yeah. um so they were like oh yeah this is like this like a giza whatever yeah. and they're like so now giza yeah. like 70 whatever but yeah. like giza 45 is yeah. dying off like oh we can't get those it, it's it's interesting cuz yeah. i think with giza like they named it like generation yeah. 
traditionally yeah. like numbers, so yeah. it might be easier to trace it, which is um, kind of cool. But but just to to clarify, Ultimate Pima does come from the seed of CL and yeah. cotton. So somebody I think asked yeah. in the comment, is it the same thing? It is. It is not the same thing, but it is the same variety, same yeah. genes are in. in yeah, the, the the original genes are the same, but yeah. the evolution has right. changed off differently. Mm -hmm. So if you were to take the current generation that was grown in one farm mm -hmm. uh, or like or how they've evolved that right. seed and put that variety somewhere else it will not grow the same way yeah so cl and cotton also that the ones you talk about now like cl and cotton originated in the, the caribbean Caribbeans. so like the ones that that are grown in america that are called cl and cotton is also different from that yeah. so every you know every time like anything is moved or like you know, each generation of seed also uh, have Changes. different, yeah. yeah, just like cute people. In interestingly <laughs> enough, with the ultimate Pima cotton, they were talking to us about fiber length over generation, mm -hmm. and it is, it is, it's, it's getting stronger. Like every year, they're like, okay, this year's getting stronger, this year's getting stronger, this year's getting stronger. So even within like the year of production of cotton, the fiber length will change, and uh, it's all on the up, 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 up. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm very excited for the evolution of this of this cotton strain. And again, this is something that nobody talks about yeah. uh, in the world. So it's it's very fun to dive into this and and learn more about it. Hopefully, we'll get a chance uh, to go and visit the farm and and see everything ourselves but mm -hmm. uh that yeah. that will be hopefully sooner than later a lot, a lot of sooner <laughs> than later but I, I, I it, it's certainly a possibility um and just another like fun fact that i we learned about it and so this con is grown in new mexico mm -hmm. at a high elevation mm -hmm. and so this for organic farming has a lot of benefits number one because it's cold it is a natural pesticide mm -hmm. right you don't get as many bugs and things like that so you don't you don't have to worry about that thing as mm -hmm. much but when it comes time to harvest season, mm -hmm. because it gets cold fast, it defoliates the plants. Yeah. So you can pick the cotton much easier. And all the cotton picking is done by machine, actually, so it, it can be done quite efficiently. Mm -hmm. But um, with the fewer leaves in there, that means there's less junk in it. And, uh, you know, the, the processing of the cotton, it makes it much, much easier. Yeah, they um, call it killing frost. Yeah, killing frost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I need a, a specialty cotton infographic. We, you know, <laughs> no, if, you're, if there's any graphic designers yeah, out here... Yeah, I have to work with yeah, you. Please send us a message. We, yeah. we, we want to create some of these infographics and things like that that we can include with the products. We're not, we're not so talented in that respect, but... Uh, yeah. We, uh, if, if you are a cotton... A cotton. If you're, if you're specifically a cotton uh, uh, graphic designer, Is there yeah, if you love cotton, thing? yeah. No, no. If you're a graphic <laughs> designer and. Uh, we we'd love to work with you. Uh, so yeah, like infographics is yeah. also hard because you have to be able to like think in the way to like you know present. Yeah. yeah. And bullseye sounds like a hyped ELS cotton to me. Not sure if it can be noticeable against Suving Gold or Sea Island cotton or even Supima. Please elaborate more. No. Okay, so if you're specifically talking about. Um, no disability on your skin. Obviously, uh, each person is different. You you might be able to tell a different cotton from the other. Sometimes it's not. That a, a lot of other things to get into that also. Just because the cotton is is the same doesn't mean that like if the yarn spinning or knitting part is done differently, it's gonna feel differently. I don't think personally nobody in the entire world, even the top top top, like you know cotton expert in the world can just simply touch a fabric and yeah. tell what it, it came from, honestly. But one thing to note is that like compared to, you know, other things for us, it, yeah. we, we have to we have to be able to feel the difference. We're not saying that, oh, compared to Suving Gold, are we going to be able to? We're not doing that because nobody's going to do that. But we, we, we made sure that the fabric that we, we end up with is noticeably different from, yes. say, average um, t -shirt. cotton T-shirt. And everything we're doing in this line is to be the best of right. every spec possible. Yeah. So the best organically grown cotton yarn. Yeah. Sustainably sourced. Yeah. Sustainably grown. Yeah. 
yarn it, spun in Japan yeah. using vintage yarn spinning machines in order to create an authentic vintage touch and feel on the cotton. Yeah. If you want a natural slub, you can e either do it with a vintage machine, which are not very common, or you get a slub that is computer controlled. Mm -hmm. And so it does look semi-random, but when you... Actually, we might have an example. Is it, this is a, a different... Do Sorry? We, we have the slub yarn card. So like you can see, like, maybe we just got to cover that part up, yeah. but... Uh, no, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, sorry. Um, you can see the pitch of the... This is even. And so the slub pitch is always going to be even when you have a computer-controlled slub because it's programmed that way. And when you weave a garment, it may look random, mm -hmm. which it ultimately does, but that's... In my brain, I know the only way to get the real slub yeah. is to have a vintage machine do it because it's not doing it's doing it out of inefficiency, right? And so the current slub machines are trying to reproduce that, mm -hmm. whereas I'm gonna go with the real deal way. Right. And then if you want the real authentic vintage T-shirt production, you have to make it on a Suriyami machine. And now, are all of these things gonna be noticeable all at once, all at the same time? No, certainly not. Right, but I'm just going the extra distance to make it as authentic and pure as possible because for those people who want all those details, who want it in a t-shirt, who want to feel, you're going to feel some of it. Or like, again, if the average person puts that on, it's, well, it's a comfortable t-shirt and it'll mm -hmm. be an expensive comfortable t-shirt. Yeah. But for those people who are into the details, mm -hmm. this is the t-shirt for you. Yeah, and, and again, I think we do like, um, value, the traceability, the transparency, the story we can tell. Those are things that you, you're you not going to feel on your skin, but I think those things mean something and yeah. that we are trying to achieve yeah. that all in, yeah. in... We're not trying to do a race to the bottom, you know, mass produce. If, if that's... We're going to the opposite. We're going for a race to the top spec-wise. Mm -hmm. You know, a mass-produced, you know, T-shirt... You can get a comfortable feeling t-shirt for not a lot of money. Sure, no problem. But we want to preserve all of these trades, all of these tools, you know, the growers who are making the best stuff and present it to you. Yeah. So that's really our aim, not just with this particular t-shirt, but with absolutely everything we right. do. Uh, and I think we do that. This t-shirt is super soft and comfortable and because of the suriyami knitting it has a nice bounce and stretch to it that you you that is the real you know when it comes to denim selvage denim you see the edge and it's much more noticeable to know that that was made on a vintage machine where suriyami knitting is much less obvious but what you get is the stretch and bounciness from the fabric so you get a stretchiness you get a bounciness you get a fuzziness you're not going to see it here but you get a like a peach fuzz to this t-shirt which is like kind of really really soft right off the bat so yeah. and another thing is that as you wash them uh that's when you actually can tell the difference uh between this different uh fabric so like when it's brand new you might have to pay extra attention to see the difference but as you wash them you can definitely feel it it's just going to be it's not going to be flat and you know like tight it yeah. would just it's like it, a, it, it, it keeps the air because the reason why it does that is that like the the yarn stutter knit they all want to go get back to that uh normal state so it when it's knit with the air in like with you know round round shapes as a knit you know yarns like that because the difference is like when you do it with the modern machine it, they tend to have more tension so the loops are a little bit pulled um and with Turiyama, it, it it's it's more what's the word it is it has more room and more air into it uh, more relaxed yeah. so w th when you wash it, it the cotton tends to go back to that state so that's why it kind of keeps the air in it just it's it's more uh textured whereas like the the 
you know, non Suriyami, they, they might tend to also stretch back out to the state it was um, net yeah. as well. Uh, Am's bullseye falls up. Thanks for the reply. Mm -hmm. Then it sounds like a hand. Then it sounds like hand spinning is more rare in the industry than machine spinning. No, no, no. this is machine yeah. spun. It is on vintage machines, yeah. not modern machines. Yeah. So the the slub that it creates is just out of pure inefficiency rather than or inconsistency or inconsistency so rather the, than yeah computer controlled yeah the modern machines are always perfect 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 yeah. so if you don't computerize the slubs it's all going to be very uniform yeah. Yeah. and that's great for certain use but for what we like, we want the natural slab. It's like a handmade feel, but nobody's actually spinning the yarns by hand. Yeah. That's that's yeah. going to be thousands of dollars yeah. more. <laughs> yeah. M maybe one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> maybe one day. Uh, okay, and to add to my comment above, what is the weight uh, GSM? Yeah. The, so, so the there is a target weight, and we're just waiting for the final production to come out. Yeah, so 230 GSM is the the current estimate. Yeah, so 6.8 ounces yeah. per square yard. Yeah. Uh, so so it's not a lightweight. Uh, it is uh, It is categorized as as a heavy ounce yeah. uh, category, 6.8. I, I think you can yeah. easily sit in the, the heavy weight. But it doesn't feel like that because it's not packed in. Yeah. It's... it's has a has a drapiness yeah. and, a, and a and a squishiness. Right. Uh, you'll you'll see it when we get the uh, the product photos up. Yeah. Um, it is going to come in white and it is going to come in black and that's where these that's just two. just going to circle yeah. back to us developing these new uh, tags. New tags. Yeah, okay. so, maybe black is just easier to see. Yeah. So it is monotoned. Yeah. So it's got a great look it's to it and it still has that three D texture. Yeah. And it's very like it, you can read it. it. It's it's not hard to read or anything like that. But uh, it's got like a satin, um, like a satiny finish. Yeah. Yeah. So I can. Uh, Risa's got it here. It might be hard yeah. to see. I'm, gonna, I'm no, just going to switch yeah. it over to there, so you guys can see it uh, there. So these are going to be available. Uh, like the silky finish, the smooth, you know, kind of colored look are going to be available on the fleeced fox. Sorry. On the uh, on the ultimate Pima Suriyami T-shirts um, in white on the white, and then we're also going to have a black version of the shirt, so it'll be black. So very monotone and clean throughout. Very luxurious. Yeah, very luxurious. So we wanted to really create a, a luxurious feel, vintage, you know, v pure vintage mm -hmm. developed T-shirt, and uh, yeah, spec wise. And, and 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 like difficulty of production wise, it's Perfect. really just we <laughs> cranked it to max. Yeah. So uh, there you have it, everybody. Yeah. Um, okay, Nick Nicholas writes: Are you planning any other fox fiber clothing? I'd love to see a naturally colored fox fiber seven hundred one, if that's possible. We want to, but we're not there yet. 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 Yeah. Um, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. Um, you know what? Let's. I want to show off uh, because because of our our fun trip to Wakayama, we got to get some nice footage of uh, of the mills. So uh, let, you guys want to see some Suriyami knitting in action? Uh, let's uh, let's take a look. So so these are the machines, and as you can see, they're verting, they're verting, they're knitting vertically. Um, I don't know how I got that word, uh, and. You'll notice at the bottom here, I don't think you can, oh, you can see my cursor, um, how the fabric is being packed up here. So it's just left to hang, and this hanging knitting allows the air to just weave itself right into the fabric. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I, right, you don't see my cursor. Okay, so you can see it, uh, anyways, you can see the machine here in action, and uh, I think I'm going to get a close-up shot here of the, uh, the knitting part. So you can... Again, I can't point, but this is where the needles are, and this is what's creating the uh, this is what's need, knitting the fabric. And you can also notice that it's just sorry. Let's just, I'm just gonna pull it back out a second here. You can see just the one yarn that is feeding the machine here, so it's very very slow. I'll take it over to another vintage machine that's a little bit more modern, and you'll see that there's many many yarns that are feeding the machine, so it's able to knit uh, at a at a faster pace. Uh, but this is quite slow, uh, as you can see. Let's, let's see 
some intricate gears here. We'll, we'll try to make a video uh, yeah. showing off all the stuff because we, we did get to see a lot of really incredible things happening at this mill. And the word Tsuriyami um, also comes from the fact that these knitting machines are hanged from the ceiling. So you can see that there's a bar at the, the, the top of this and this is like hanged. Um, uh, there, there is a um, maybe a, I'll skip to the front. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah over exactly. here, you, these there's a bar. It's hard yeah. to see, but there is a bar, and all of these machines are hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, and yeah. hence the name Suri. Yeah. Suri there Mitter you can see the bar. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's one thing I, I actually didn't know. It is um, from another discovery. Yeah. They also oil the yarn as it gets fed into the machine. Yeah, there's these little cups. This, like little jars. <laughs> you can see it on the top corner here. Yeah, um, it's so old yeah, school. Yeah. It was just, I, I, I found it really funny. Yeah. It was just so, I mean, in the Charming in a way, way. It's, it's very junky, yeah. but I, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. It's so old school. So, yeah, there's just these beautiful old machines that are still running and yeah it's quite neat okay good question this mm. is a good question um uh adam uh I, I i'm gonna screw the rest of it up but adam writes are there any side seams on the tees for the suriyami uh, uh ultimate pima tees there are going to be side seams now we're going to do flat seams on the sides to keep everything nice and tight but you can see the reason why there are seams is because these are the bodies and so the reason why a circular knit tee or has a sorry i gotta go to here you can see here that the the circumference of the body is fixed and for japanese production it tends to be one to two sizes so unless we are somehow going to keep a machine operating 24-7 for our own production. But we also have six sizes. Right. We would need six machines operating all day, every day, just for our production alone. So and there's only like so many of these machines right. in the country or in the world, yeah. for that matter. Uh, we are not there yet. Yeah. And uh, this is actually a great question. Not only is it for Syria, like, okay, so two, two things. I find there's a lot more confusion around Suriyami and circular net t-shirts mm -hmm. in the world. Some people tend, I have seen some people comment in a way that like, just because there's no side scenes that, that it is a, uh, a Suriyami t-shirt. That is not correct at all. Most t-shirts in the world, most jerseys in the world are knit on a circular knitting machine. Yeah. And a lot of the times, the cheapest of the t-shirts, like Hanes, you know, three pack or whatever, um, they tend to also not have side seams. They're not made in this vintage machine, on this vintage machine. It's just that, like, it, if you make a certain amount of uh, t-shirts for production, it is cheaper to make knit into that that the size that you want uh, yeah. as a body than than knitting the, this, you know, wider uh, uh, fabric and cut it and sew the side seams. Yeah. And that's why there's a lot of, um, a lot of non side seam. Like, yeah, there's a lot more tubular, circular, tubular, tubular body t-shirts out there in yeah. the world. That doesn't really uh, show the, the, the that is the not quality. a distinct is, sign of quality. No. Yeah. It just means that, and, and I think it is a good thing that you don't have a side seam, honestly, but because we are making specialty things on a specialty machine, uh, it, is, it, it, it is not possible for us to have the body that is uh, it's, uh, without side seam, especially if we want to make the sizes that we want to make, the, the fit that we want to make. That, that is just not a possibility at this time, at least. Yeah. Um, that's, that's just what, like, you know, a lot of the times people are like, oh, this, is, this has side seams, like, then that's uh, inferior quality. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I see the benefit of not having side seams, but it, it really shouldn't uh, indicate to you that it is a sign of 
better quality or right. worse quality. So, so there, there, there you have it. Yeah. Um, now, AMS also, AMS Bullseye also asks, uh, are the ultimate cotton tee, sorry, thank you again, on the ultimate cotton tee, I'm sure if I missed it, are the side seams done with the Union Special Flat Seamer? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, with poly cotton or ultimate Pima cotton? It is not with 100% cotton thread. That right. would be insane. Um, <laughs> the reason why you wouldn't do that is because 100% cotton thread will break. And... Did not a good yeah, if, if you've ever owned jeans, because sometimes you'll have like these repro brands that go all repro and they use 100% cotton thread and the seams just break all day, every day, mm. all the time. And the mm. point is that we're going, you, you know, you understand that they're going to break because we use 100% cotton thread, mm -hmm. but that's because that's what they had at the time and that's all they had at the time. Mm -hmm. So they, you, they, they do that. But mm -hmm. it's, for, as far as a durability standpoint, um... No, I would, I wouldn't, even if we, like, with Naked Famous, when we do, like, the MIJ line, like, there's no way I'll use 100% cotton thread. Yeah. It's just, it's dumb. Um, we want to make clothing that you can wear for a long time. Yeah. And not just, like. It's not just, if you want just a repro, fine. But this is not, uh, not something I would recommend or do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unless you're doing an actual repro. But, like, it, this is gonna go. In, sorry, we're going to a little dumb talk, but um, customer-wise, unless they are very aware of the fact that these seams are all going to break, no matter what you do, no matter what little thing you do, you're just gonna have complaints all day long. Yeah, yeah. And and this is a, a understandable complaints, but people tend to expect longevity of a garment yeah. just because they paid a little bit more money. Yeah. And that's not really necessarily... That's not necessarily the case. Sometimes the case, sometimes you're but, strictly paying yeah. for the but, what goes into making that yeah. garment. But at the same time, we do understand that if you spend a lot of money, you don't want it breaking down on yeah, yeah. you know week two. So that's why we try our best yeah. to have details that make you, you know, yeah. make your garment last longer. Yeah. Uh, Delo Para writes, would you consider making slacks or jeans at some point, something more appropriate for work? Uh, we do that with Naked and Famous already. Yeah. So, so there's there's jeans there, uh, all the jeans you can you can ever want. Uh, and uh, slacks, not so much with Wonder Looper. Wonder Looper is going to be knitwear driven. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's uh, anything that, that involves loops. That's that's what we'll make. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so I hope that answers your questions about side seams and uh, I guess the benefits of suriyami. Yeah. Um, Just so that you guys can see, this is the side seam. Yeah, it might be it overexposed. Might not be yeah. Sorry about that. See. Hold on. I'm gonna uh, pull uh, that. Uh, uh. Oh, now we can see it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So very very flat. Yeah. So inside too, it's the same deal. This is the the type of sewing that used in like underwear sewing. Yeah. So it re really it touches your direct skin. It shouldn't bother you so much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jordan Jenkins, how long does it take before those cotton strands break in one hundred percent cotton? Is it about one year, three months? If you have jeans made with one hundred percent cotton thread, your first day of wear, you're going to break something. I don't know. I've had jeans. There's, there's no like. There, there's no actual logic. Yeah, yeah. Like there's no yeah. uh, calculation that yeah. you can do to make. I, it I've sure. I've had them and I broke them day one. It, it I mean, it's it's yeah. the tension, yeah, yeah, right? Sure. Like right. especially yeah. with jeans, a lot of the people wear it kind of tight yeah. in some parts, anyways. So. Um. Okay, this is another naked and famous question, but uh, Vera Para is naked and famous a PT USA reference? PT, he means Presidents of the United States of America, the band. Oh. Maybe. Mm. It's a good song. It is a good song. I love that song. Um, uh, okay. Are we forgetting anything? Oh, this video. This is a good video. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is, you guys want to see the double heavyweight 701 GSM knit being made? Well, we've got footage of our fabric being made live in person so here it is this yeah. is the machine and you can see all if you look at the top that's how many strands of yarns are feeding this machine now it is a more modern machine than the suriyami but these are still quite old 
but just to clarify, like Suriyami machine, if they're needing uh, French terry, there will be three yeah. squares of yarn for now. It just knits like one roll at a time. Yeah. So like a single yarn going in, it's just knitting a jersey. And uh, here we're knitting a French terry. So yeah. like a third of this is making uh, a one like row. It's, it's yeah. one row. And uh, you'll also notice, um, quite interestingly, there's these air blowers. You might see it in a second. See the thing that's spinning behind? That's spinning air to just keep everything nice and clean uh, as, it's, uh, as it's going to the machine here. And you can see the needle popping up. But yeah. Yeah. Sorry, the video, <laughs> this needs to be edited into a more uh, concise video here. Yeah. But, uh, anyhow, we were, we, were, we were excited to see everything. Yeah. Get it from far. Let's just talk a little bit about this trip because I was blown away. This was our first time um, going into a knitting um, mill, uh, like, yeah. In terms of like you know, uh, we've been to like we've denim to weaving mills, and spinning mills even before for cotton, yeah. yeah, or dyeing and all that stuff. And we always like it, but this was the first time that we went into knitting mills, and you know, it's just the 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 biggest takeaway is that that it it's um you know we we talk about like. Uh, vintage machine and like new machines mm -hmm. and you know when we go to denim uh, weaving mill like the modern machines are so modern like yeah. they are just so computerized like everything is going so fast yeah. and it's just super clean and all of that whereas like this yeah um, what you just saw is like supposed to be the like Th this is their modern machine <laughs> the modern right. machine. Yeah. so yeah. it's just like for us we were just like wow like this is yeah. not even like this is a vintage machine yeah. and it is it's it's it's, it's this is older old. than like some of the older. shuttle looms that are making denim in japan today this oh 100 yeah. percent. yes yeah. this is this is older than your parents basically yeah. but um yeah so that that was like a, a little bit of a surprise to me yeah um, so that's, that's one thing. And the other is just like, uh, in specific to this meal, I, I had a very good time because it was just like, it's a relatively a small meal. It's not a, it's not a big giant, um, of the meals, but they, they do have so much care. Like there are so many people running around and like making sure everything is done correctly. And like the, the place was immaculate. Like basically there was just like, because there's a lot of fluffs, like they they don't have a robot pick, picking up the dust, but yeah. they were just so clean, they were well taken care yeah. of. Um, they have like an amazing garden on the back. Yeah, <laughs> it's just very well yeah. taken care of too. Like I just felt the care that goes yeah. into this. Yeah. Also interesting about this uh, factory was that they were uh, very much solar powered. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 they were very big on it. They yeah. said that. Uh, they were 70% of their electricity comes from their mm -hmm. solar power generation mm -hmm. and that they are, they're kind of in the forested Woods, area yeah. so that they, fi they find that even emission, the, that they do put off yeah. goes right into the forest so the yeah. trees do the rest of the filtration there. Right. So this was a big part of their, their, their yeah. mission as well. And then, uh, uh, Bulls and Bullseye also talks about here, um, uh, just to talk about the durability, uh, uh, of cotton threads versus polycotton. The fabric is made from 100% cotton, which is which also has a limited shelf life. Cotton is a natural fiber, and so it is a biodegradable fiber. In fact, at the mill, they were showing us um, photos of their tests of like how cotton will eventually be absorbed back into nature. You know, w like whether it was like buried in the ground, whether it was like sitting in a river. Um, so yeah. versus like. Um, versus uh, uh, like a blend material. Mm -hmm. So they might have had like a, a poly blend material or a rayon yeah. blend material or something like that. And they showed that like the 100% cotton like degradation over time so was they, they, so much faster yeah. than than the synthetic fibers. Because the synthetic fibers, as some of it would break down and mm -hmm. some of it break like eventually will break down. But the speed at which cotton fiber will break down in nature and, you know, be 
reabsorbed back into yeah life. So what was funny was like they're, they're just like the 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 owner of this mill was just like yeah. Well, so we knit like a tube of like you know with cotton, hundred percent cotton, and then like a few inches down, and like continuously like with uh fifty fifty poly cotton, and then like hundred percent poly and hundred percent rayon or whatever, yeah. and then it made it like a giant tube, and then like yeah, so I just buried it in the the backyard here, and then put it like by the river uh, over there, yeah, and then just you know check on it every you know ten days or whatever yeah. like a few few weeks, and then just record it and pulled you know each each ones and yeah. pull it put it and he on had it he had it on a wall where yeah. you could see like yeah. you know this is the material this is the length of time how much of it degraded yeah. so and then also and then he's just like yeah so we got this data like you know with our experiment and then i found this article about this exact same yeah. data like in a like a published yeah. uh thing so i print it out and then put it next to it yeah. <laughs> just, but yeah it is you know cotton is a biodegradable material yeah. And so, you know, from from uh, like an organic cotton all the way to use, all the way to the end of life, it is all going to yeah. go back yeah. uh, to nature. Um, okay. So I hope that uh, that answers some of your questions regarding that. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that trip was amazing. Uh, we can talk more about it in details. But uh, it, overall, we, we're... We're very excited about the upcoming season. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we're we're getting the hang of it. Yeah, we definitely. We learned a lot uh, in the past few months, and we I think we can just uh, you know continue making yeah. better stuff over time. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we should share these stories with you a little bit more as we learn. You know, we we you know I I like to think I know a lot, and then I get into a new subject where I'm like. You know, it's, I just don't know as much as I thought I knew. Mm -hmm. And because this, this, this rabbit hole goes even deeper than I could have imagined. So mm -hmm. uh, it's fun to share this information with you guys. And uh, if you are a graphic designer, <laughs> can help us with some mm -hmm. uh, stuff. Uh, reach out because we'd, we'd love to, we, we need to partner up with somebody who, who is not only a, a fashion nerd, a uh, fabric nerd, but also a graphic designer could help us make something uh, that Definitely. would be readable to our audience. Uh, a couple things before we close out this live stream. Um, if you are going to buy, I don't know if there's too many hoodies left on the website, but if you are going to buy a hoodie on the website uh, sooner than later, um, I said that a lot this live stream, uh, we can upgrade your uh, drawstring. So if, uh, if you make a purchase on the website um, now, you can request the thicker draw cord. Uh, and we can change that for you. If you want to change your existing one, we'll have these eventually on the website. We'll just have them for a few bucks. And uh, we, I wouldn't recommend buying it on its own just because of shipping. But if you're going to buy like a T-shirt or another hoodie or something else, we can we can send you. Uh, you know, th those will be available as a as a you know an add-on kind of item. Um, but just note that if you do that, the the holes are meant for smaller yeah. cords, so you but, might have a hard time. We've been able to yeah, do yeah. it, but ourselves. But um, there's a little. Anyways, we'll show you what tool you need. To, you can buy uh, just yeah. like a little puller tool. It's doable, but yeah. Anyways, it might, it might be a little harder. Yeah, but just, but, just giving it. Yeah. Um, and then lastly. Um, because when the new production comes in, I don't want to mix some of the old um, the the old details with the new details. So if you're not already subscribed to our email list, you've got to be a subscriber. Um, we'll have some deals going around on just the remaining stock of the double heavyweight uh, items. And uh, so if you if you want to pick up, you know, the sleeker uh, collar on the crew neck. Or the double thick hood on the hoodies on the double on the French sorry on the Fox fiber it'll always still it'll still be the double, but on the 701 GSM double heavyweight French there's a lot of words that'll be a single ply. So if you, if you want any of those, we yeah. will um, we will uh, make those available at a at a good price for yeah. you guys. So yeah. uh, watch your email box for that. Oh, Christian B with the with the comment, the important comment, uh, because uh, he asked, were 
the new retailers mentioned, I showed mm. up late. We're gonna mention it right now because I almost forgot to mention that. We did. We have expanded uh, some of our retail um, uh, points. So if you go over to, um, sorry, that didn't work. Let me just load up the, the proper thing. If you go to wonderlooper.com, um, you always want to check our stockist list. And this is gonna have a list of all of our retail partners worldwide. Uh, you know, anytime you support them, you're supporting us as well. So, you know, don't feel that you always have to shop on our website or anything like that. Please do support our retailers when and if possible. And in the United States, we're adding uh, three new locations, all with our, our good friends at Standard and Strange. So New York City, Oakland, and Santa, Santa Fe. Fe. So three locations available. That's going to be happening this fall. So they're not going to have it you know, until September, October, probably. So watch out for that. And then in Europe, we're uh, we're going to be expanding in into Spain with Red Cast Heritage. So two new retailers on that front. And then, of course, we're continuing on with our existing retail partners here as well. Um, Expansion has been a little bit difficult for us just because there is only a limited amount of production space that is allocated to us. So we can only make so many goods. Uh, and if we were to expand our distribution, it really only cuts down on the amount of inventory any retailer can have. Mm -hmm. So, and, and another thing is that we're very careful because we do realize this is a very specialty product and it needs to be sold with the intention of like Stories telling the told. story. Yeah. yeah. And so like we cannot just like, you know, work with anybody. And, 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 and that's, that's not to say that like we, you know, we're just being very, you know, like gatekeeping or yeah. anything like that. It's just that we have, uh, like, like I said, like the production space is limited, and at the same time, we also need to be very um, careful that, like, we just don't want to be the like, oh, this is, you know, this brand makes, you know, expensive garments. That's yeah. not what we do. Like, we make garments that are special, and yeah. it's, it comes with a higher price point. But I, I just don't like the idea of yeah. us being yeah. the like open yeah. price and, and, if you, and if you've had any of our products already you know i'm sure you can you can attest to the quality and mm -hmm. the wearability certainly this is a garment that it is something that you can wear for a very 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 long time and get a lot of use out of it um so i think it's all about the ride right you, you know i like wearing my double heavyweight t-shirts i like wearing my my fleece fox fiber i like wearing my double heavyweight terries you know i wear them pretty much every day and so every day I get to enjoy, you know, this beautiful garment. It's not just a graphic tee or, you know, some other, you know, I well, would like, say that everything that we have is very wearable day to day. So yeah. you get to wear it a lot more. Like, Whereas if you were to buy like a fancy suit, yeah. you can't wear the fancy suit every day. Yeah. It becomes you're not, difficult. You're, gonna, yeah. you're not going to wear that to the grocery store right. or anything like that. So, um, yeah, that's that's part of it. Um. Jordan Jenkins, would it be a lot harder to work with these manufacturers if you didn't live in Japan? These specialty manufacturers tend to have less presence online. Mm -hmm. um, I think living in Japan makes things a lot easier. Obviously, our, our Japanese language ability, our ability to communicate with these companies is yeah. you know, a big advantage for us as well. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Even then, like th these companies, they, they are like people who know or who wants to be making good quality things, they, they, they all know them. So like, yeah. it's, it's like, they're not gonna just like, are happy to take any business. Yeah. So I mean, it, we, we actually like, now we can admit that it was a little bit of a struggle in the beginning, even though we had, you know, a decade of experience yeah. in the apparel industry, we just like, because we were new to this knit you know, knit yeah. fabric uh, world, it was a little hard for us to get our toes into this. Yeah. Uh, they, they work culture. with, you know, number one, you know, their production capacity is their capacity. They can only make so much. So they want to work with the companies that they can know and they can trust. And they're making high-end materials. Mm, they're not you know, interested in just making, you know, just yeah. random. They, like, yeah. admitted, like, they make... They make high-end materials for us, but they also make high-end materials for a lot of the luxury brands. So 
that you might pay a lot more for it through the luxury brands, but they do make a lot of, of, of stuff in that realm as well. So, um, yeah, we, 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 we are partnering with the best to bring yeah. you the best. And we're trying, like, really the idea of no compromise. There, even the zippers that we're using for our, our zip, they're so expensive. So, <laughs> they're really expensive. Like, they're, they're not, like, a YKK zipper is great, right? And that, great, qual- great quality. Great quality. quality yeah. zippers. But, but we just wanted something special yeah. and something... That you don't see every day. That yeah. is just, you know, is, is going to give you that little extra wow factor. So Yeah. And then what I love about them is also, like, their, their nerdiness. They're yes. so nerdy and they're so passionate about what they make. And yeah. we can relate to that. So. Yeah. So... We hope you enjoy all these little things. They do add up, Mm -hmm. but I think overall it makes a nice, beautiful ride and a garment that you can trust in and believe in and and enjoy for a very, very long time. So um, we appreciate all of your support, of course. You uh, You guys have done... Wonders for us, mm. Wonder Looper, um, <laughs> and uh, we hope you enjoy the next collection. We are we are in the development stages of you know spring summer, mm-hmm. uh, twenty four. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, more good things to come. And and the Raven, which email should graphic designers use to reach you? Uh, info at wonderlooper dot com, uh, or just find us on Instagram. You can always uh, hit us up there. Um, last question, Christian B. Will more retailers get double XL hoodies this time, especially Standard and Strange? Um, you got to talk to them. Mm. The retailers order what they feel they need. I, I believe they ordered some. Double XL? Yeah. I'm not I'm, sure. Off I'm not sure off, my offhand. But if there is a size that you want, you know you can ask them for it. When they feel there's a demand for something, they will react to it. Um, you know, oftentimes, if a retailer doesn't carry double XL, they don't get any sales history on double XL, so they don't know that they should be ordering double XL. But if you have people asking them for double XL or size, you know, or bigger jeans or you know, bigger shoes, whatever that is, then they know that there are people asking for it, and then they will react accordingly. And then it'll be a slow build. They get it in, they sell it, they get it in, they sell it, and they they, they start to understand that's something that they need. We carry all sizes, but uh, obviously, if you want to ship shop closer to home. Um, just just ask your retailer. They're, they're, especially the retailers that we work with, it's not hard to reach the boss. Right. It's very easy <laughs> to reach the boss. And so when they hear from you, they will, they will react accordingly. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Everybody, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Yeah, uh, you've had fun. a lot of us this weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you watched mm-hmm. all of it, man, double, double thanks to you. And uh, we yeah. really appreciate you taking the time. Um, You know where to find us. Mm -hmm. We'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.